What's up everybody? It is Thursday, February 2nd. Nice rally today. Nice rally in the NASDAQ. And we had a big move up in Meta. Meta, of course, was is the former Facebook stock. Very strong earnings, folks. You had good chance to buy Meta on the way down. You had good chance to buy a lot of these tech stocks on the way down. I, I don't know about the people here on this channel who follow me, but I know lots and lots of people sold out. And this behavior, I mean, I see it all the time and I talk about it and it, it's just, it's like a wonder to me. It's a wonder on the one hand why, why people do this to themselves and then on the other hand it's totally understandable why people really don't end up accumulating any wealth in the stock market because they actually do the opposite behavior of what they have been trained to do as consumers in the marketplace where you know you buy low and and you don't chase after high prices you wait I mean as consumers and I've said this so many times I've given talks about this how we're the most consa uh, savvy consumers on the face of the earth here in America I mean we literally taught the retail industry how to sell to us like give us a deal give us a good price and we will buy. We have to kind of be coerced into buying with, with a low price, you know, with Black Friday and, and Amazon Prime Days and all these things. <clears throat> but when it comes to investing, it's really an incredible, it's like a 180 degree opposite behavioral pattern. I mean, people sell when it goes down and they're selling. Look, there's going to be times when you want to sell companies are losing money they're going bankrupt first of all I don't invest in companies that lose money but that doesn't mean at some point in their operating history they can't run into some difficulty and lose money but uh, but for the most part you want to concentrate on big name companies that are dominant in their industry that have a history of profitability that have good management and you wait and when the market goes down, like I say this so many times, that, that should get you excited and not excited in a negative sense. And, and believe me, I've been all through this. Like I experienced the same anxieties as everybody else, even though I've been doing this for a long time. You know, when I saw what was happening, like last year, March, April, May, June, through that whole period when there was this hysterical selling based on monetary policy, uh, the change in mon monetary policy, the shift by the Fed to raise interest rates. And really, because me, you know, for me, I see it the way it really is. A and to me, it was all irrational behavior. And by when I say I, I see it the way it really is, you know, I understood that initially there was going to be a negative reaction in financial assets as you get that discounting because of the rates go up but I also knew at the same time we were having a historic contraction in the fiscal but I kept saying that that was gonna level out that was gonna level out and then we were gonna hit that inflection point where the rate hikes would have less of a negative impact than the positive that was coming from the fiscal expansion, those interest income transfers. I mean, people, I, I might as well have just been, you know, uh, speaking it to a, to, to a dog or a turtle. I mean, they just did, not you guys, you guys understood, but I mean, people didn't want to hear that. And the so-called, you know, all the various serious people who show up on CNBC, like, today I'm watching CNBC. No, not really, but I mean... It popped up on a, uh, <clears throat> I think it was on a YouTube video or something, and it was a live feed, and they had Ray Dalio on there. He's a frequent guest, and Ray Dalio, you know, he was at one time running the biggest hedge fund at Bridgewater. And don't confuse with running a lot of money means that you know a lot of things. Like, you might be a good trader. I've, I've, you know, I've I've given these anecdotes, or I've uh, I've um, 
shared these anecdotes in the past where in my days as a floor trader, I mean, some of the biggest traders I knew, the toughest guys in those pits, the guys who were, you know, really making big money, I mean, they didn't know anything about economics. They didn't know anything about, uh, you know, these numbers, these government releases. They didn't follow monetary policies. They were just tough, aggressive dudes in the pits. And, you know, they, they inspired fear. I told you stories about how you had like Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan and Solomon Brothers at the time and Merrill Lynch, they would have spotters in the pits just to say, you know, what's this guy doing? The biggest firms on Wall Street, right, with the deepest capital and, and 150 years of history of operating and dominating Wall Street, they'd have their guys on the phone like, what's, what's Tom Baldwin doing? What, what's Lewis doing? It's incredible. Anyway, I got sidetracked there a little. Oh, Ray Dalio. So Ray Dalio, so because he's on CNBC, I mean, I don't watch CNBC, but I, like I said, it popped up. And he's like, you know, we're in big trouble in this country because we have borrowed so much. And I'm like, here we go again with this BS bullshit borrowing. I mean, what are we... Now, this guy was the biggest hedge fund runner in the world with Bridgewater. I don't know, he had something like 180 billion. <clears throat> what are we borrowing? Dollars? I mean, the United States government, the government is the monopoly issuer of the dollar. And the sale of treasuries is nothing more than a reserve drain. And by the way, the only way, and I've said this a zillion times, the only way anyone can buy a treasury is for the government first to put the dollars into the system because you can only buy treasuries with dollars. Same thing with taxes. I know everybody hates to hear this because it does feel like our taxes are paying for shit, but I mean, we can't even pay our taxes if the government didn't fill the pool up with the, the dollars, right? You can't drain the water until you fill it up first. But this was Ray Dalio, and they're all sitting there like that idiot Joe Kernan and, and the other guy Sorkin, and oh, oh, oh. I mean, when is this shit gonna end, man? Really? But let me segue here for a second, all right? Because I've been telling you that the market's gonna go up through uh, mid February because we got a powerful month here, folks. We got the quarterly. By the way, yesterday was the first of the month. We had 100 billion leading spending flow. We had a 65 billion net spending flow, so now we're back to 65 billion above the level where we were on December 14th, where all these tax drains, we recovered all of it, just like I said, and we're above that level. And we got a quarterly interest payment coming in on the 15th. We got also this month um, IRS tax refunds. I've been telling you guys this, you know, last year. February, March, April, we had 260 billion of tax refunds. But last year we were going through the first, you know, cut, the first rate hikes, and the monitored zombies were freaking out. It was a total freak out. And again, uh, there was a discounting process that had to happen. And again, even more importantly, we were still experiencing that record contraction in fiscal. But I said that was going to, you know, that would plateau out. That would just find a new stabilization level and start to go back up. And that's exactly everything I told you has been happening to dates, to the dates. And I try to keep you from going hysterical. If you ever saw the movie Wall Street, and I'm not talking about Wall Street 2, that was a shitty movie, but the first Wall Street, Wall Street with, with Charlie Sheen and Michael Douglas, and in the movie, Gordon Gecko, Michael uh, Douglas plays Gordon Gecko, that operator on Wall Street. He says, the most valuable thing I know is information. Information. But people don't value information like real information. Like things that I teach you, things that I explain. I'll give you an example. I had a... <clears throat> And this is, believe me, this is not complaining and I'm not whining. I don't care, okay? 
I had one subscriber who was one of my initial subscribers going back to 2016. She was paying like $75 a month. All right. Never got an increase. 75 bucks. And she's like, I remember at the bottom, maybe it was October or November. Uh, I want to cancel. I'm like, why do you want to cancel? You got the lowest subscription rate. You know, it's like it basically is it, not even, I can't even say it's free. It's like massive, really insightful uh, education and information. And I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but my stuff is completely different and correct. And she's like, well, you know, I'm going to get, I said, well, if you quit now, how do you know when to get back in? And that was right around October, November when we were having the turn. We were having a turn in fiscal and I was saying that, you know, and it's like, I'll, I'll get in when I start to see my stocks go up. And this epitomizes exactly what I said at the beginning of this video when I said this is the, this is the absolute wrong behavior, but it is exhibited by just about everybody, really, just about everybody. I bet anything she's not is still not in. And I was saying, you know, all of you know who are subscribers, how I was saying, and even you who follow my, these videos religiously, you know, I've been saying, I'm even telling you when the new volatility, when the new, you know, correction is coming. So I guarantee she's not in again, because why? She didn't listen to Gordon Gecko. The most valuable thing there is, is information. And you cannot pay too much for information. Okay? It's scalable. It's scalable in the sense that, you know, it might be a, a little bit of a burden, of a cost, of an investment in the beginning. But that allows you to parlay. That allows you to build. That allows you to scale up. And it doesn't take a long time before that information and its value is literally costless. You got to start somewhere. You know, you got to start somewhere. If you want to putz around, you know, and if you want to listen to the doomsday people who like that with their single variable... Uh, analytical framework which they themselves don't even understand I mean then be my guest be my guest and do that if you want to trade when lines cross on a chart look I did that most of my floor trading career and I'll be totally honest I don't have much to show for it when I made my money and look this is an admission when I made my big money on the floor, I had inside information. I don't have that anymore. My inside information is now knowledge and a macro approach. That's right. I had inside information where I was making 90, 100,000 a month, you know, basically with zero risk as a, as a novice because I had inside information. That's a whole other story, which maybe I'll talk about. All right. But like, that's long gone. I had to figure out another way. And this is the way. This is the way. All right? You need patience. You need information. You need the right behavior. Everyone can do it. But they, they just, a lot of times, they just don't like to sweat it out. They don't like to wait. They want it all now. Instant gratification. I, you know, like, some people will never learn. It took me a long time to learn. You know, I used up a lot of the years of my life. I'm going to be 66. I try to keep in shape. I wake up, you know, 4 a.m. By the way, tomorrow, <clears throat> and I still, I'm running shirtless. Tomorrow's going to be like, 10 degrees Fahrenheit here in New York City at 4 a.m. And I'm running on Fridays. I do my longer runs. They're like five mile runs. And I'm doing it shirtless. <clears throat> like I do every day. <laughs> so if you don't hear from me tomorrow, <laughs> you know it didn't go very well. But I think I'll be all right. 
uh, expose yourself to stuff that's uncomfortable, like every day. Like how many times have I said when it comes to the market and it goes down and again, I'll admit, it, it bothers me. You know, I get stressed out, I get pissed off, I get angry, I get in a bad mood. People around me, I don't know if they really want to be around me. But like, that's how you build the calluses on your mind. The emotional calluses that you need to withstand this kind of stuff. Nobody said it's going to be easy. Even those algo shops, you know, the biggest one I know, which is Virtue, uh, Virtue Financial, and I, I know the guy who's a, well, he's the chairman, he's the chairman emer emer emeritus, uh, Vincent Viola. He, he was a, a floor trader on the NYMEX when I was down there. They don't make money all the time, even though they have a massive, massive advantage over us. Look at their stock. It hasn't been doing anything fantastic. I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're profitable, but come on. So, like, what do you want? What do you want? Anyway, that's it for my rant for today. I, I did the uh, second part of my pizza making video, so don't forget to go check that out as well. All right? Peace, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye.